Hi, I'm Kevin Hennessy, and you're watching Exploring Wild. I've not ventured far from my house. You can see it there in the background. I am going to go up into the mountains behind my house and uh, just see what's about, see if we can spot any sign of wildlife, hopefully spot some wildlife. But uh, this video is actually part of a challenge. I was losing inspiration and uh, there's actually some deer scat on the floor and some elk scat on this hillside, which looks pretty fresh. So the elk are using this little, uh, this little gully behind my house. But uh, I digress. I recently put a video up explaining lack of inspiration, lack of motivation uh, for going out and filming YouTube videos. You know, I'm always out with my digital SLR, but seldom am I out actually filming. And it's funny because I thoroughly enjoy the, the creative process of filming. Um, but I just lost inspiration, the motivation to, to go out and put in the time and effort to, to produce videos. And uh, there were quite a few comments on that video, and I do appreciate that. Thank you. Um, about going back to basics, you know, just a camera, maybe a drone, and, uh, and go out and film and tell a story. So I can't promise that this video will tell a story, but it will be a video filmed on my phone and just my phone, nonetheless. Okay, I am just entering, we're on the border of um, an elk refuge, which is actually up behind my house. And uh, after that it's BLM and after that it's National Forest. So it's uh, pretty much zero people from here on in. And uh, the area that I'm sat in is covered in elk scat and deer scat. I've even seen some domestic dog prints and I'm wondering if that's actually my dog that comes up and wanders around here. But I have a confession to make. When I said I was only going to use one camera, I lied. Because I also brought with me a trail camera, um, which I'm going to set up. I've actually found here there's... Tons of scat where I am sat right here. 100% of it right now appears to be elk. So there's two trees directly opposite each other. And I'm actually going to use this tree behind me uh, to anchor my trail camera. It's nothing fancy. It's nothing expensive. Um, but it gets the job done. And one of the things I like using a trail camera for is obviously identifying what wildlife is using a specific area or certain trail and I'm interested in this particular spot um, for a special reason and I'm just going to set this camera up and then I'll explain to you what that special reason is. So the reason I really wanted to come out and put a trail camera up in this particular area is I am probably no further as the crow flies than a thousand yards from my house. And there is a tree right here that last year, the year before actually, it was a couple of years ago, my uh, brother-in-law, who unfortunately passed away in a road traffic accident last year, uh, he ran hound dogs. And he actually treed a mountain lion in this tree right here, which I got a photo of. Uh, unfortunately, neither of us, <laughs> in all the excitement and commotion, neither of us grabbed a firearm and I am also now very aware that I did not grab a firearm when I came out today but that mountain lion was responsible for killing one of our goats um, and I have seen sign of it last Christmas there was tracks in the snow around the house um, but I have not seen him since and he's a beautiful Tom but uh, the fact that he's coming in so close to houses and taking livestock means that he has become a pest. Um, so I made it my goal um, to track him down and remove him, basically. And 
it's painful to say that because you know I'm always out and about and I always see wildlife and I always use the word abundance and statistically speaking that just isn't the case of all the animals on the planet wildlife now only makes up four percent and I mean that is saddening it is shocking that the wildlife population truly wild animals only make up four percent of all of the animals on the planet everything else is in captivity or pets four percent and another term I always use is wilderness um you know the Rocky Mountains are one of the last true wilderness areas you know on the planet and as of 2021 true wilderness areas had dropped to only 35 percent of the planet's surface 35 percent is now only cla classified as wilderness and you know i want my kids to grow up and their kids to grow up having the experiences that i'm able to have you know to witness wildlife in its natural habitat to go out and hike and explore true wilderness areas and at the the rate that that is changing the rate at which wildlife and true wilderness areas are disappearing that's not going to be a possibility for them and it's always you know the the what can i do what can i do what can i do and at the end of the day it's not it's not the individuals the governments have to start looking and approaching things differently you know sustainable energy it's it's insane you know there are so many sustainable energy options out there you know for those up in the mountains living off the grid you know they are living fully sustainable and they manage every single day um but there are so many sustainable energy options out there solar wind you know um water options there is just it's possible and it is doable but you know governments need to start implementing plans and coming up with grants and things that people can use to start implementing those changes because otherwise you know 2050 2060 2070 this this planet isn't going to sustain us as human beings and that is a scary thought well, I've come across the other side. There's a creek where I showed you the tree where the lion was. It drops down into a creek and then back up the other side. I'm actually on the other side of that creek. There's a, quite a few little birds down there flitting in the trees. And that brings me to my next confession because I also bought my steel camera my digital SLR seldom do I go anywhere without a digital SLR so I'm gonna sit here just for a little bit and watch them and I'm gonna grab my digital SLR slowly slide down the bank and uh, see if I can get a photo or two Well, Sod's Law kicked in again, and by the time I had finished filming, the birds had buggered off. So I decided to go with some macro photography, just take some macro shots of the lichen growing on the trees here. There's quite a bit of juxtaposition between the vibrant greens on that lichen and then the, the dark, earthy tones of the bark. So we'll see how those turn out. Now, that's one of the reasons I carry a, a, the lens that I carry on my camera. Um, and also because I'm not rich and can't afford the fancy stuff. So my camera, my digital SLR, is just a Canon 90D. Uh, it works well for wildlife photography. It's not full frame, which is a bit of a drawback when it comes to wildlife photography. But uh, it gets the dob, the dob. It gets the job done for me. And the lens... Uh, predominantly stays on this camera. I have another 
camera body in my bag with uh, an 18 to 135, I think it is. Um, but this lens pretty much stays mounted to this camera and it's a Sigma 150 prime. Uh, but it has macro on it, which is really nice. So if I do not find the wildlife I'm looking for to photograph, I start thinking small and then switch to macro and, and take some macro shots instead. Uh, but just sitting here, you know, even if you don't get the photos or the video footage, and I'm going to be honest right now, I have um, my film camera in my bag. I separate my still cameras and my film cameras. I have de designated film cameras and designated still cameras, and I keep them very separated but I do have my fancy film camera in my bag and it has been very difficult not to whip that out and film the birds fluttering between the trees but I made a promise that I would film this with just my phone and I'm going to stick to that promise. I digress a little bit but uh, you know if you're out and you don't happen to get that photograph that you're after or that film footage that you're after there is always a silver lining that you get to spend time <laughs> out in the wilderness. And you now with that creek running along there, sitting here, I've had my binocular out, just glassing the trees, watching the birds playing, listening to that creek. And it has been 10 times better than a yoga studio. And before anyone mentions the stretching that is done during yoga on my jaunt across the side of the hill I did in fact slip forcing me into the splits position so not only did I get a good stretch I also got the calming and tranquil sounds of nature well I'm gonna pack up head back to the house and get a nice cup of hot coffee because it is still chilly out. I think when I left it was about 27, 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Feels that wind picking up, it's probably still about the same. Uh, one thing I did forget today was gloves. Um, oh, and a good time to mention uh, Swazi. Um, I am an ambassador for Swazi, they're a clothing company out of New Zealand. And before anyone says anything about being a sellout, I have worn Swazi gear probably since the mid 90s. Um, in fact, I still have one of their anoraks that I bought probably 15, 16 years ago, and I still wear it to this day. That's how durable their clothing are. That has been to the tops of mountains. It has been out sailing on oceans. It has been hiking in forests. It has been kayaking on rivers in the Edisto in South Carolina. It has done a whole ream of stuff. It has been to various different countries and it is still going strong. And I was very proud when Swazi approached me and asked if I would be an ambassador for their clothing because ambassador programs these days and i was guilty of it early on when i first started youtube and instagram and all that kind of stuff companies approached me and said hey you know do you want to be an ambassador for us and we'll send you free stuff and you take pictures of it and make it look good and i was like hell yeah yeah i'll do that you know absolutely and i never really thought about the product or you know if i believed in the product or or if it was me personally spending money, would would I spend that amount of money on that product? And 99% of the time, if I was honest with myself, the answer was no. Um, whereas Swazi, I have bought my own Swazi gear. I've paid full price for Swazi gear. And it's not cheap, but it's also not cheaply made. It is tough, rugged stuff. In fact, this uh, pullover I'm wearing right now, the uh, Swazi Nahani shirt, um, this was one I purchased myself when I lived back in England almost 10 years ago now and it's going strong and one of the things I love about this is it's it's hunting slash farming gear I guess is how they market it but their hoods are all black lined so when you're glassing you pull your hood up and it blocks out all that extra light around and you get a really nice image 
through whatever optics it is that you're using, the hoods are all peaked, so they have that extended peak on them. Um, they, it is just fantastic gear, and I'm very proud to be an ambassador for Swazi. So in all my videos to come and on my Instagram page and all that kind of stuff, I'm always wearing Swazi gear for two reasons. Um, one, because I've now purchased an awful lot of it, so pretty much my entire clothing cupboard at home is Swazi apparel, but also because I 100% believe in the quality um, and the function of this gear. It is no mess. It is basically function over fashion, even though it is actually fashionable stuff. And like I say, very proud to be a, an ambassador for Swazi. And I wanted to give them a shout out in this video because their, their clothing is amazing. And I'll put a website. They even now have a US website. Previously, it was all done in New Zealand and, and shipping was kind of expensive. It was like 58 dollars or something just for shipping irrespective of how much you spent on the website but now they have an american side to that so shipping is drastically reduced you can purchase it through the american website so i'll put the two links um to the website um on the comment or the whatever it is on this video it's been so long since i did a proper youtube video that i can't remember how it all works um but yes there is my plug swazi apparel bloody good stuff